Alright, so today I'm going to be tying the EP minnow, and this is a great fly for almost any predatory species of fish, and I mainly fish this for bass because, I mean, I live in the middle of Georgia, not going to be doing much for pike or muskie or even saltwater, although I have fished saltwater once, and this was one of the flies I used. I caught a ton of sea trout and ladyfish on an EP bait fish. And I just really love this fly. It's a ton of fun to tie. It's pretty simple, and it also fishes well in almost all conditions. And it's, like I said, it's easy to tie. The materials are just some um, white. I think this is bucktail white EP fiber. And some tan EP fiber. You can obviously mix it up and do whatever colors you want. Generally, it's like a white or a gray on the bottom, and then a darker color up top. A lot of um, good ideas for that, like white and chartreuse or white and olive. That worked pretty well. And you can really mix and match this to sort of um, work with whatever hatch you have wherever you fish. And the shape is just like a general bait fish shape. You'll see this shape a lot across fly tying. But, yeah, let's get started. So the hook I'm using is not like a streamer hook or anything. It's just this, um, like probably size eight or six, like wet fly type hook. And the thread I'm using for this is just like sort of gray thread. And sometimes I'll start the thread base like right on the middle of the hook. But this time I'm just starting it here because ultimately I just retrace my steps. So, the end result is about the same, no matter how you approach it with the thread base. To start, I'm going to bring my thread right back to where when my thread hangs right here, you can see it's like parallel with the barb of the hook. And the first color EP that I use is going to be white. So you want to tie this in like, definitely smaller clumps. This is a fly that's definitely better off with a little bit too little material than a lot of material. So, to start with the white, she's going to be using about a pinch like that. Might even take some of that out, make it a bit thinner. Probably a pinch like that. And I want to tie it in right on the midpoint. And generally, like for the tan, I'm going to be tying at the top. For the white, I'm going to be tying at the bottom. But since this is sort of sort of just a um, starter pinch, I just tie it dead center, coming right out the back of the hook. Almost like a sort of tail, even. And now after I tie in this sort of tail piece, I'm going to rotate my vise. It doesn't work too well with the camera angle to have it flat to where I can see it, but I'll, um, I'll rotate it after each step so you guys can get a solid look at it. And after the tailpiece, I tie in some of the belly material, which, like I said, bucktail white, or just whatever lighter color you're using. And I want this to extend as far back as the tail, actually. I don't want to um, make it shorter than the tail and try and unnaturally taper it like that, because ultimately, when I trim it, that adds a smoother taper to it. So right now, I have like a bit of a bump right there, but as you just move on, that's kind of the whole process of tying it, is like lumps like that, and just moving forward with it. So now, I'm going to take some of the tan EP fiber, and I'm going to take about that much. And I just want to trim that off. And as you can see, like, not too much, but enough to where when you fold it around, you won't be able to see straight through it. I think that's a good rule of thumb to go by with this pattern. So right, like you can, as you can see, you can see through it a little, it's like semi-transparent, but not way too much so. You want it to look solid in the water. It's not like a glass minnow where you want it to be as transparent as possible. And if you actually notice, at the beginning when I was showing this EP minnow I did not use like tape eyes or 3D eyes or anything like that 
And I actually prefer that because it gives it a more like subtle presentation, right? So it's not like overly flashy. And it has the profile, right? So when a bass notices it, it'll get sort of a reaction strike out of it. More so than like if you were to add eyes even, because eyes, it chases it down. But if you just drag that by a bass's face, it won't see it for a solid minute. But as soon as it sees it, you got a good chance that it'll strike your fly. In each step, I just want to tie in on either the top or bottom and fold around to the other side, tying in at the midpoint. And this flies off to a really good start. Sometimes with flies like this, the start will be a little bumpy, and then the entire fly will kind of snowball down from here. But this one's doing pretty good. As I mentioned, this is a great like beginner streamer pattern. If you want to tie like an easy pattern that's also really productive. And the steps to this fly kind of you just continue this process. And then at the end you shake it out to bring the fibers into their like natural position. And then you want to um you want to trim it down to either like a tapered bait fish shape or like a tube shape. Or whatever shape the hatch, the forage in your area is. Now I'm going to come back in with the white. And this is a really repetitive process. It's kind of, um, kind of monotonous for a minute, but I don't think it's too bad. It's a lot of fun to tie because, like, the end result, like a clean EP bait fish just looks really great. So it's always just a great fly to have. And once I finish this up, I'm actually going to get some underwater footage in the fly tester just to show you how this works because it's a it's a good fly underwater. It just keeps like a nice and like stiff shape with not too much motion. So it's great to like strip fast and aggressively and just like steady motions. When I fished saltwater with this pattern, that's how I was fishing it when I got all those lady fish and specks you just kind of want to take long strokes with your arm and really fast but also consistent and then just wait for something to take and get a solid hook set on it there's not too much to fishing this pattern but you can fish it really slow or fast depending on what the fish are eating and I've said this multiple times throughout the video, and what the forage is, that's probably the main factor. If you have, like, I don't know, sculpins or something, those aren't particularly fast, then you might want to fish this slower and on the bottom. And with, like, a sort of gray or brown and, um, like, olive or dark brown at the top. But if you have, like, darters or something that's really moving, then probably give this one like short and aggressive strips and then for shad probably just like really long and steady strips and the reason I mentioned so many like types of forage back there is because this fly really you can make it work for whatever your forage is probably just in general chartreuse and white is a great color combination for fly patterns so that's always a go-to to have. I like this tan and white. I think it looks pretty cool. But chartreuse and white is always a solid go-to, whether it be like a Clouser minnow or an EP. I think like right now, a chartreuse and white Clouser has taken more species than any other type of fly pattern that's out there. There's something like 80 species. It's ridiculous. But you just kind of want to repeat the process of building up. And we're almost finished here. And then we'll whip finish, trim it down. And then just use some Sharpie markers to color it. Nothing fancy for that. And the head, you don't want it to be too big. So this is probably the perfect size head proportionally. And um, now that we're finished, I'll rotate my vise a little to show you guys, like, 
that's what it looks like from my angle is something like that and this fly does not look good before it's trimmed it looks like an absolute mess but once you trim it up you can um get like any profile you want i guess that's why it's kind of great that it's a complete mess because it's a completely empty canvas and that you can shoot for whatever profile you want on it and now that i've finished and whip finished this fly i want to shake it out aggressively like this until all the fibers are going in every direction at which point you can put it in your vise if you want to stay stable but you can also just hold it in your hands i've seen a lot of people do that i just want to make probably just bring it up here make a cut on the top just like this sort of going down and getting that head flatten it out maybe round it out some right here and then just a bit here and here and this is probably what makes up the most of this fly it's the hardest part for sure too actually because it's a very simple t process to get it started so i think like the most issues that people have with this fly probably comes when it's being cut Probably the stomach, especially, because you have to work around that hook. And this is not going badly at all right now. I'm just going to take this out and, like, clean up some on here. And, like, trim some of these really long ones. And, um, once I clean up just a little right there, Get a little more taper. This thing's probably good to go. And I'm just gonna stroke through it for a second. I think that'll be about the profile. Maybe just trim up a little more down here. This is always the part that has the biggest chance to go wrong. Because you second guess every cut you've made. And you're like, oh, yep, one more cut will fix that. And it just kind of spirals and goes crazy from there and ends up messing up your fly. But you can see right there, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the profile I've gotten out of this one. So now I'm just going to add... An eye with Sharpie, and of course, if you want to use like a tape eye as opposed to just Sharpie marking it, you certainly can. Like a 3D eye. Then I'm going to just take my fingers like this and add some stripes just to sort of give it some more effect. And then rotate it around and do the exact same thing. Keep the stripes about even. There you go. That looks pretty good. Now I want to take the Sharpie and just give it a red stomach right there. And this is a pretty general color scheme. You'll see like stripes with like a red throat in all sorts of streamer patterns. But yeah, that's going to be about it for the tying section of this video right now. So, let's throw this thing in the fly tester and see how it does. Alright, so now the fly is right here in the tester. And I'm about to turn the tester on, which will send it back and show you what it actually looks like. So, let's go. And there it goes, kind of bubbling to life. And you can see there that some of the fibers kind of wave around. It's just a little bit sideways, but that's kind of come from the current of the tester. It'll go back... To normal at times and that's also due to the camera angle but you can see EP fiber has a great motion in the water here actually let me take my camera my little phone out of here and I'll show you like right there directly from the side it is like a great slightly wavy type action 
and I really like it because like yeah you can see like that it looks sick in there but it has perfect action when stripped fast you can see that's kind of what it looks like when you strip it really fast and when you bring that right by a fish and it just swallows it it's great and yeah that's gonna be about it for today's video and if you enjoyed this video and would like to see some more videos like this please consider liking and subscribing and feel free to comment any of your thoughts on this video or suggestions for any future videos. Thank you for watching.